video you just watched was put together using footage from ArtGrid and edited in HitFilm Free. So let's break down the process. The first thing you're going to need to do is decide the type of travel vlog that you want to make. I settled on a sort of short, cinematic piece to music. But don't worry if this isn't the style that you've chosen for your video because the tips can be translated to any type of travel vlog. The main thing you need to think about when creating a travel vlog is the structure, because you can just put loads of pretty clips together on a timeline, but if it doesn't tell a story, then an audience isn't going to get invested in it. For travel vlogs especially, think of this as going from A to B. For my vlog, the main story that I'm following is the journey of the first day of a holiday for someone. So you've got going to the airport, the flights, arriving, seeing your hotel, getting a drink, and then heading out for an evening of scuba diving, which sounds like a pretty good first day of holiday to me. And then of course, there can be smaller stories within your main story. B stories, if you will. For example, in my vlog, I have the scuba diving story. So I started with the scene showing the sea, then the person entering the sea, then diving down, then swimming around in the water. So that's a little story in itself that forms only a small part of the overarching story in the vlog. And my vlog is only 25 seconds and I've already got many stories in the stories. Imagine how many stories you could create in a longer video. Next up is picking music. And this has never been easier thanks to our new creative library. HitFilm now provides curated assets such as templates, sound effects, and music. I found the song Cocoa Bread in the free section, which just sounded really fun, really holiday-ish, summery, just perfect. To use media from the creative library in your project, you can click the download button and then the add to media button, and then you'll find it in your media bin, ready to be dragged onto your timeline. And Cocoa Bread is included in the free plan, so anybody who wants to use it in their project can go ahead and do so. And now onto the edit. You can see here my full final timeline, but don't worry, we're gonna break this down into sections now. So I started by just going through all of my footage and put them in the order of the story that I am planning on telling through my vlog. I did this by just opening up each of the clips in the trimmer, setting the in and out points, and then just dragging them onto the timeline. So the next step is to go through and just cut your footage down so that it matches the length of the music. So now that I have my basic edit down, let's go through some of the details, starting with the title sequence, which is such an iconic part of a travel vlog. And I actually took inspiration from some of our recent shorts we made on titles for your videos. In the short, Tom created this wiggly text effect using the edge distortion effect. But today I'm using HitFilm Free and that effect is not included. So I'm gonna show you how you can create pretty much the exact same effect using heat distortion. So I picked a handwritten looking font and just wrote out my title, added some little squiggles either side, just because I thought it looked kind of fancy, and then just centered it in the middle of my screen. So just drag the heat distortion effect onto your text, turn distortion and diffusion strength right down and diffusion bias right up. Then as you move the scale, you'll see that the text wiggles. So you can just keyframe two different numbers on the scale for the length of the clip, and then your text will have this nice subtle wiggle to it. For the second part of the title, I just turned the second piece of footage into a composite shot. From here, I just wrote out the same text again, but made it fill up as much of the screen as possible and just centered it up. This white text is going to be like a cookie cutter shape for where you're gonna see the footage. So I wanted it to be as big as possible so you could see as much of the footage as you could. Then I just added a black plane layer and made sure to drag this to the bottom layer. This is just the background, so it doesn't have to be black. It can be whatever color you like, but I just chose black because I think it helps make the footage stand out more. Once you've made your text, just make sure to drag this underneath the footage. So then you're just going to drag the set mass effect onto your footage and set the source layer to your text. And as you can see, it has just cut out the footage in the shape of your text. Now the rest of these should be the default settings, but make sure that the matte source is set to alpha and the blend mode set to replace. And that then leaves your footage in the shape of your text. Make sure you go in and just hide the text layer when you're finished, just because otherwise you might have a little bit of an outline around your text. And we don't want that, we want it to be clean. So now let's break down how I made some of the cool transitions that you saw in the vlog. So I used a technique in this video a few times called a match cut, which is where you take two pieces of footage that look very similar, place them next to each other, and it kind of transitions. So the most obvious place that I did it in the video was on the plain window scene where it goes from day to night, just to kind of show the passing of time. The only effect I used in this was a cross dissolve transition just placed between the two pieces of footage. But to make sure that they did line up perfectly, what I did before I added that transition was I just dragged the two pieces of footage on top of each other and made the piece on top just a little bit transparent so I could see both of them. And then from here, I could go in and change the position of the top clip 
kind of match it up with the one underneath so you can see both of them at the same time. And then when I was done, just set the opacity back to 100% and dragged it back next to it so I could add the transition. I also used speed ramping as a transition in this video, so let's go through that next. So to do this, I took two clips that had very similar upward movement to them. So let's call them clip A, which is my shot of the plane taking off, and clip B, which is the lovely drone shot of Spain. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just line up both of your clips on the timeline in the order that you want them to transition, and then just use the slice tool to just cut a couple of seconds off the beginning of the first clip and the end of the second clip. So now you have the four clips on your timeline. So to create the speed ramp effect, all you're going to need to do is use the rate stretch tool to just shorten the second and third clip on your timeline. Now the rate stretch tool doesn't actually cut any of your clip. What it does is it makes the clip last as long as you drag it out to be. So if you drag it shorter, it's going to speed the clip up. And if you drag it out, then it's going to slow the clip down. So now you've got a couple of gaps on your timelines. So if you just close these up, then what you'll see is that you've created an effect where the two clips kind of whoosh together. Now let's break down the diving into the ocean shot that I did, which looks very complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. Now, similar to the speed ramping, the best way to make this effect work is to have similar movement in both of the shots. If you look at the original footage, you'll see that they do not have any movement to them. So just grab your clip, go into the controls panel, find your position, and click the little circle icon to toggle the keyframes on. Now, if you come up here, there's this little icon here that will just open up your keyframe timeline. So you can scrub along the clip a little bit and then you can add another keyframe slightly further along that is further down. So now when you play back the clip, as you can see, it moves downwards. So then I just overlaid the two clips on top of each other on the timelines. So now both clips have that same downward movement to them. All I did was drag a linear wipe transition onto the top clip. When you drag this effect onto the clip, you can see that the wipe is going left to right, which is the wrong direction. Easy fix, just change the direction in the control settings to zero, and then just crank the feather right up so that there's a really good blend between the two shots. So this has created quite a nice blend between the two shots. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna change the duration of the transition. Hover your mouse over the left side of the transition and you can see your mouse changes so you know that you're changing the transition. And then you can just drag it. So you can choose at what point in the clip you want it to start. So I'm going to drag it quite far back to kind of when the diver begins to go under. So now as soon as the diver starts to dive under, you can see that it begins to turn into the next shot. And then finally, just to add a finishing touch to my video, I headed back over to the creative library, this time to the sound effects tab. I mean, it's literally free and built into the software, so why not? And I think it adds just a little bit more immersion to the video. And that's my travel vlog completed. Hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks either to do with structure or maybe some fancy little transitions that you can use in your own travel vlogs. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.